You can tell we're in the heart of the college football season now because you've got college football practically every single day of the week. All these midweek games from insignificant conferences like Conference USA, Sun Belt on Tuesday night, Mid-American Conference, Big East last night. Yeah. Big East last night, insignificant conference. Ain't that the truth with all this conference realignment BS that we're going through? Is there anybody going to be left standing in the Big East Conference? Which, can you call yourself the Big East Conference if you uh, offer Boise State and Air Force opportunities to come into your conference? Big East, Boise State. Last time I checked the map, Boise's over there. Big East is over here. I don't know. It doesn't make a lot of sense to me. Air Force, Colorado Springs, nice place to visit, but doesn't remind me of being on the East Coast. That's for damn sure. Hi, everyone. Al DeMarco here, and this is going to be your Thursday video report. Of course, we have more college football tonight. Conference USA play, Rice and Houston. Hey, in case you're on Jeopardy, do you know in major Division I college football, there are only two cities that share Division A programs? One tonight in Houston when at Robertson Stadium uh, you've got the Cougars entertaining Rice. The other one, guys, quickly, come on, Alex Trebek, give me the answer. Yes, in case you're on Jeopardy, guys, it's UCLA and USC. How easy is that one? So, uh, no, North Carolina and NC State do not qualify. Neither do Duke and North Carolina. Doesn't work that way. Close. But no cigar, guys. Okay, there you go. There's your trivia question for today. Hey, I got to talk about Anthony Red, guys, because the guy is just absolutely on fire. Last night, and as I alluded to in yesterday's video report, we both had big plays on the same side last night. And thankfully, we both won with Pittsburgh. For Anthony Red, uh, you know, just an amazing, nice little run here for A-Red. Uh, tonight, coming right back with another 50-dime play. 50-dime winner number 9 out of 11 on Virginia and Miami of Florida. Just as strong as last night's winner on Pittsburgh. Just as strong as Tuesday's winner on Troy. Just as strong as last Friday's winner on Syracuse outright in the double-digit blowout of West Virginia. For A-Red, looking for winning day number 8 out of 9. Listen, guys, the past 8 days, and this includes that big uh, winner he had on Monday night with Jacksonville outright over Baltimore. Over the uh, past 8 days, uh, $10 bettors have won $5,275 betting his action. $10 bettors up $5,275 in an eight-day period as he's gone 10-2-1 overall. Again, 59 college winner number 9 out of 11 tonight on Virginia, Miami. Uh, I thought about that game, and I'm going to give you that game actually as a free pick. My thoughts on it, I really don't like the game that much. I think the best bet on the board tonight is actually the other game between Houston and Rice. Uh, that's what I'm going with tonight, and of course it's in the Conference USA where I just hit my Conference USA Game of the Year, as you may recall, on Saturday with uh, Southern Mississippi laying three at home against Southern Mississippi, Southern Methodist and beating the Ponies in that one easily, 27-3. to uh, Tonight, as I said, I think the best bet is, of course, in Rice and Houston. And FYI, about last night's game, and I'm going to get to your money-saving coupon and your free picks as well in just a moment. You know, last night was another 15-dime play for me. And again, a 15-dime play may not sound as big as A-Red's 50-dime plays, but it's all relative, and it's all based on the scale that an individual handicapper uses. As I always like to tell you, you know, 99% of my plays are rated between 5 and 15 dimes. So last night, uh, a 15-dime winner again cashing in with uh, Pittsburgh. That was on the heels of uh, the Southern Miss winner on... Uh, uh, for Saturday against SMU on the heels of Arizona over UCLA 48-12 to last uh, Thursday night. And, of course, in the NFL two Mondays ago, the Jets 24-6 laying the seven against Miami in that Monday night contest. So, listen, guys, here we are three months into the football season. And college and pro combined, I have now hit 20 of my 30 15-dime plays or higher in college and pro combined. Going back to the beginning of August, the beginning of preseason football, 20 out of 30. I'll take 66%. I have no complaints about it. Neither should you. You know, when I had my uh, tip sheet back in the 90s, I had a tip sheet called the Player's Preference Playbook. Uh, that was something where over a five-year period with my best bets, I clocked in at 67.9%. You know, nobody wins every single day. And anybody that tells you they win every single day and every single big play, they're liars, cheats, and frauds. They probably have an 800 service. They probably have guys with thick New York accents calling you morning, noon, and night, begging you for their inside information game, which doesn't exist. And they're probably selling both sides of each game on a daily basis. 
The fact is that as a handicapper, you know, and as a gambler, you go in streaks, both good and bad, just like the teams and the players that you're handicapping on a daily basis. The key is winning consistently and hitting the big plays over the long haul because that's how you make the money. So again, three months into the season, hitting 20 out of 30 best bets, I have absolutely no problem with that, and I don't think you guys do either. Uh, one more thing I want to point out, uh, Trace Adams, my God, he calls himself the Thursday Night King, and why not? Uh, Thursday night plays. Um, normally, a thousand star play is his top rated selection. Uh, on Thursdays, he has what he calls his 1500 star lead pipe lock. Well, tonight it's on Virginia and Miami of Florida. And guys, the records are this Thursday night football dating back to 2007. So we're talking about a four year term here. He is 54 and 26 with Thursday night football plays. And these 1500 star lead pipe locks where he raises the bar, uh, you know, higher than his normal rated play. 38 and 17. 38 and 17 over the past four years as well. Tonight, uh, 1500 star Thursday night lead pipe lock winner number six out of seven on Virginia and Miami. Uh, cashed in with Arizona last week. Again, He's got another one going tonight, so you might want to check out Trace Adams as well. Uh, by the way, FYI, if you happen to be on a site where Trace Adams is, you know he also has pay after you win plays where he's won 20 out of those 30, and it's simply as stated. If he doesn't win, you don't pay with those special pay after you win releases. Listen, your money-saving discount coupon code tonight is going to be GHOST15. GHOST15. Hey, it's in honor of Halloween. What the hell? Let's have some fun. GHOST15, G-O, <laughs> G-O, yeah, I have a journalism degree. G-H-O-S-T and the number 15. G-H-O-S-T and the number 15. Why do I spell these things out for you? Because you will not imagine how many people write in the customer service and said, Al was talking too fast. I couldn't understand what the hell he was saying. So there you go, guys. Ghost. 15, G-H-O-S-T, and number 15 will save you $15 off of any single purchase you make today. It's a one-time usage coupon, and it is only good today. Let's talk a little baseball. Let's talk a little football. First of all, in college football tonight, Again, I thought the best bet on the board was definitely the Rice-Houston game. It's not that I didn't handicap the Miami of Florida uh, game against uh, Virginia, but, you know, here's my problem with Miami of Florida. Do they have the defense to maintain and cover a nearly two-touchdown spread at home against Virginia? That's my problem because, you know, listen, this is a team that went up to North Carolina a couple of games ago, two weekends ago, opened up a big 27-3 lead in Chapel Hill, and then they had to hang on for dear life to win that game 30-24. to um, You know, that that is not uh, impressive in my book. Yes, Miami, Florida has cut down on its turnovers, cut down on its penalties. Ja'Cory Harris has played exceptionally well this year, and it's a revenge game for the Hurricanes and Harris because last year they went to Charlottesville. They were 5-2 and two on the season. Harris was knocked out early in the game, and that really started the demise of the Randy Shannon error at the U. Uh, this year, Harris comes into this game 14th in the nation in passing efficiency. Now, remember, this guy is like Mr. Interception, okay? 14th in the nation and passing efficiency. 12 touchdowns, just four interceptions on the season, already nearly three, 1,300 yards passing, 90 for 145. So he's played exceptionally well in that one. Last year, of course, uh, Miami lost that game in Charlottesville, 24-19. They're off to a 4-3 and three start this year. They've got a full complement of players back from the suspensions and the injuries. 2-2 two and two in the ACC, having won their last two games. This is the middle of three straight games in Miami for them. Uh, beat Georgia Tech and North Carolina. Carolina last two games, of course, so Virginia beat Georgia Tech as well a couple of weeks ago at home. Al Golden, the Miami head coach, served for five years in uh, Virginia as defensive coordinator. In fact, Virginia's head coach, Mike London, was a coaching associate of, Gor of Gordon as Golden as well. Um, I think that Miami's going to be able to run the ball here tonight. Uh, Virginia comes into this game with one of the top rushing defenses in the league. But other than playing Georgia Tech, Virginia really hasn't played anybody that does well at stopping the run. Uh, Lamar Miller and a trio among a trio of backs for Miami, averaging nearly 154 yards a game. Uh, Harris, as I said, efficient passing. But again, you know, this guy throws a lot of interceptions. I know he's off to a great start this season, but that just makes me leery of laying the points. So I think Miami is to play here. I don't like Virginia being another one of these teams that rotates in and out quarterbacks all season long. Now, they pretty much decided tonight they're going to go with the sophomore Michael Rocco in this evening's game. But, you know, Rocco, his last game against NC 
NC State, a loss, 7 for 19 for 26 yards. Uh, that's certainly better than what the freshman did, David Watford, who had three interceptions on 4 for 16 passing against the Wolfpack. So again, I will go with the Canes in this one. You know, they're a dynamite, dynamite Thursday night play. Um, over the years, they have just absolutely been uh, devastating on Thursdays. Um, I think, what is it? 15 and 0 on Thursday night games, something like that. Um, but then again, Miami's only 5 and 12 against the spread, their last 17 in conference play. So I like Miami, but certainly not enough to put my money on them. Now, I talked about uh, Game 6 of the World Series yesterday. Of course, it was rained out. It's being played today. As you may know, I have a play on uh, the Rangers in the series at minus $1.50. It's a 10-dime play. So in essence, it's a 15-dime release in terms of my overall profit scheme. Um, I've got a Rangers team that's up 3-2 in the best of seven series. It has not lost two consecutive games since August. I've got um, Colby Lewis going tonight. I've got a better pitcher. In my mind, Matt Harrison, who I really have total faith in, available uh, to start uh, game number seven and is scheduled to start game number seven. And of course, you've got Derek Holland and C.J. Wilson, both whom have pitched out of the bullpen in recent years, uh, available for immediate relief for Ron Washington's crew. Now, you have uh, Jaime Garcia going tonight for St. Louis. Now, Garcia has a 1.93 earned run average and three home starts this season uh, in the playoffs. And overall this year, pitching at home, 9-4 and four with a 2.55 earned run average. Brilliant effort in game number two when he matched up with Colby Lewis. Seven scoreless innings, three hits allowed, seven strikeouts, one walk. Bullpen blew the game, however, for him in the ninth inning. I like St. Louis tonight, to be honest with you, minus to 115, but I'm not going to bet it. I don't think it's a bad play. I think the under, considering these two pitchers, Lewis and Garcia going tonight, uh, with sitting around seven with cold weather, which means the hitting is going to be down in the game as well. I, you know, I like St. Louis. I'm not going to bet them because I'm not bailing out on my Texas play. But I'm telling you, of the two free picks today, if I had to put my money on one of them, it would be on the Cardinals tonight. But again, I didn't make the series play on the Rangers to bail out on them when they're up 3-2 in Game 6 and a team that hasn't lost two consecutive games. And I have no faith in Chris Carpenter pitching for the second time in his career on three days rest should he take the ball in Game number 7. You remember what happened in Game number 2 uh, against Philadelphia in the NLDS when Carpenter was rocked the first time he ever did that. This guy has thrown a ton of innings this year, over nearly 290, I believe. So, again, that's my position. Good luck, everybody. Ghost15 is your money-saving discount coupon code, and I'll catch you again on Friday morning.